So last week at WWDC, Apple obviously announced a whole bunch of stuff. We got new software, we obviously got the Apple Vision Pro, but also we got new Macs. And I just did a video recently on the uh, new M2 15 inch MacBook Air. <laughs> you can check that out by clicking the card here, but also there was a new Mac Pro and a new Mac Studio. And so these are for those prosumers, the 3D renderers, the, uh, the hardcore you know, animated graphics and motion graphics and video editors and, and designers and anyone who really uses uh, a lot of kind of horsepower with their Macs. Um, you know, if you had an M1 Ultra Mac Studio, should you get an M2 Ultra Mac Studio? I don't know. Hopefully this video will help you out and I can kind of give you an idea of what it's like because I have been using an M1 Ultra Mac Studio for about a year and a couple months. I think it came out last March. And so now we've got the new M2 Ultra Mac Studio. So in terms of specs, this is the exact same model as the one that I got last time in terms of price. So it's $39.99. Uh, last year when we got the $39.99 model that came with an M2, uh, M1 Ultra that gave you 20 cores. Uh, of CPU, 48 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. This is now the M2 Ultra, which gives you 24 core CPU, 60 core GPU with the same 32 core neural engine, and uh, 64 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD storage. So the first test I wanted to do, which I'm not sure why, uh, I kind of just assumed the SSD speeds were gonna be exactly the same, but I ran the Blackmagic disk speed test and it wasn't close at all. It, I'm just totally surprised by this, but the M1 Ultra got a read speed uh, when I first did this last year. It averaged out to be around 1853 for read and write speed of 5092. Now the write speed for the M2 Ultra didn't really change that much. I got around 5100 on an average basis. But the read speeds, usually, again, 1853 for M1 Ultra, M2 Ultra, these SSDs, now I don't know if the chip really has much to do with it, but the speeds for these SSDs hit at maximum at times 6,000, but I averaged out to be around 5,400, 5,500, which is crazy. That's like three to three and a half times faster than last year's M1 Ultra Mac Studio. So something to keep in mind, not sure what exactly changed to allow for faster read speeds, if it's just an entirely new SSD or if there's something going on with the chip. I have no idea how that works, but just wanted to point that out. The read speeds are much faster with this model and that's a pleasant surprise. And then, you know, Geekbench, again, that gives you the, uh, the idea of what kind of year over year performance you get for the M1 Ultra to the M2 Ultra in terms of CPU and GPU. And so CPU scores for the M1, I did get 1723 uh, for single core and 21,425-ish for the uh, multi-core. Now for M2 Ultra, there is an improvement there. We did get a little over 2000, uh, 2088 to be specific for single core. And then for multi-core, honestly, I ran this test like four or five times and only one time did I get, uh, and this is why I'm going with its maximum score. It was 22,050, but usually I was kind of like around 20,000, maybe low 21,000, which was always a little bit less than the M1 Ultra. One thing I do wanna briefly mention is that it does appear that our Geekbench scores, especially for the M2 Ultra Mac Studio, uh, might have been throttled a little bit. It looks like the uh, megahertz for some of the higher scores that a lot of others have posted um, on Geekbench or have uploaded would uh, appear to be at the 3,677 range. If you look like near the lower 2000s, that's kind of matching up with our scores for both single and multi-core. So, not sure how, but it seems like our Geekbench scores and our performance during that time might have been throttled a little bit. So not totally sure why I was getting that, um, but just wanted to point that out. I don't think that's going to uh, lead to any like noticeable changes when I'm actually using the computer in the real world, but to just want to let you know that that's the Geekbench scores that I got. Uh, but for GPU, I ran the metal test and it's not even close. It's actually double, more than double the amount. So with the M1, I got a score of 87,700, right around there. And with the new M2 Ultra, I got a score of 192,932, which is insane. So I'm expecting some huge GPU improvements with my real world test, which for me is Final Cut Pro 
And uh, I, you know, those are the apps that I use a lot. I, I edit my normal videos on a daily basis, uh, and I edit my uh, podcast on a weekly basis, once a week. And so these are the videos that I was curious about how long it would take for them to render and export. Uh, and then, you know, I use some other apps, which we'll talk about in a second, but let's start with Final Cut Pro and my real world test, because again, this is like how I use the computer. And then if you want me to do some tests, maybe I can, uh, you can hit me up on Twitter or in the comments down below, and I can try to run those for you and give you an idea. But uh, for me, Final Cut Pro, 13 minute timeline this time, which is honestly, our videos have been a little bit longer. So I picked something around that range of like the higher end performance uh, with, lots of LUTs, motion VFX plugins, some still images. This was a camera comparison test between two phones uh, and a 4K you know, timeline, uh, which is pretty normal for me. And so with the M1, it rendered out into about five and a half minutes uh, for the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. With the M2, it saved me nearly two minutes, actually more than two minutes, with a finish of three minutes and 13 seconds. So that's crazy to me. This is literally a year old computer, a year and a couple months, uh, and we're already cutting the export down, export time down to two minutes. And honestly, it was not that long ago where like maybe a few years back, I'd get a new laptop, I'd do this test, and I would maybe wait like eight to 10 minutes of a 13 minute time and being like, wow, that I saved three minutes of real world time, that's great. We're just in a crazy day and age for computing, and so these computers are so fast, saving me tons of time from waiting around for the project to finish, getting it uploaded faster, moving on to the next project. Uh, speaking of podcasts, those take a long time because they're about an hour, an hour and five minutes. Uh, so they take a little bit longer, not too long, but a little bit longer. They're not an insane edit. It's just a lot of time for the podcast to kind of export out. Again, it's an hour long. So with the M1 Ultra, I finished in about 16 minutes and 55 seconds. The M2 Ultra cut that in half-ish. Eight minutes and 30 seconds. That's that's crazy. Again, I can't fathom how much more we can improve these uh, chips and these computers and making these MacBooks and Mac Studios and all these desktops even faster, I just don't know how, but it's happening and so I'm here for it. It's saving me a lot of time. And then in terms of like the rest of the computer, I, the only other program that I use that's like a pro application is Photoshop and there's really not of like exporting and waiting for exports, like it kind of happens instantly. It's usually just an image and there's still 64 gigs of RAM on each machine and I really haven't noticed like using a bunch of applications in Safari or Chrome tabs. Haven't really noticed any delays or improvements there. It's kind of felt the same. So yeah, I mean, overall, this machine is completely identical to the last one, uh, but the specs being the M2 Ultra chip really being the biggest difference, um, GPU power has significantly improved and has helped me personally for video editing and you know all the work that I do on a daily basis. So, I mean, other than that, it looks, again, exactly the same. Same connectivity, I guess I can briefly go uh, through that. You still get the four Thunderbolt ports, um, Thunderbolt 4 to be precise, HDMI, two USB-A, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There are still two more Thunderbolt ports here on the front and an SD card reader, and it's the same size, weight, and everything. I believe it's the same weight. I actually haven't looked at that, but feels the same to me, and it looks the same. So yeah, that is the Mac Studio, just a brief kind of benchmark and real world test. I can obviously do a long-term review in the future, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. This has been Down with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.